I'm currently in the very early stages of validating a business idea I have. Many people find themselves in this situation. It's really common. This is a real question that I got from someone who's an Innovation Tactics customer. And this feeling that the customer shared, I feel so overwhelmed figuring out how to set up a survey or experiment, where to set it up, what questions to ask, essentially how to implement it. It's a very common feeling. I've felt it over and over again until I finally figured something of a system out. That's what I share in Innovation Tactics. And I can tell you that to help you to beat that sense of overwhelm, you've got the focus section. This is the yellow cards and there's a ton of different ideas here. In this video, I'm going to share three different ways in to the, the approach you might take with innovation tactics to validate a business idea. We're going to go the very easiest, the mid-level, and then the more sort of sophisticated. So three, three choices that you can have. Just before we get into that, I want to share a little note on validation. Now, validation is a common word that is used in the startup world, in product delivery, product discovery, all this sort of place. And people talk about validating their business idea, validating their hypotheses, all that sort of stuff. That's fine, but you should be aware that validation also means kind of being accepted, being valued for who you are without having to change. And the reality of what we mean in, in validation in business is the opposite of that. It is realising that your initial idea probably isn't going to work. And if I look back at all of the successful products that I've helped to launch, where we ended up after the process of discovery and finding that product market fit, finding something that worked, what we ended up with was nothing like what we thought we were going to end up with when we began. Even more than that, it was nothing like anything anyone imagined at the beginning of the process. We didn't know enough. At the beginning of that process, when we had that beginning idea, that was when we knew the least of all about the process. And every step along the way that we took, every step on the journey of finding it out, we learned more. We learned all the ways in which we were wrong at first. And we found opportunities and options and ideas that nobody could have had at the beginning because we weren't there. We weren't in the process finding this stuff out. So it is a journey of discovery validation. It's not a one and done sorted. Your business idea is brilliant. Off you go. If you're looking for that, that's fine. People will give you those opinions. Innovation tactics is not going to do that. So this is for people who want to face up to reality and figure it out. The next question is, do a survey or do an experiment? It's not that simple. So I tend to, in innovation tactics, we've got a whole section that's all about probes. This is a, a principle that I use. When we do a survey or an experiment, we tend to be doing them with an end result in mind. There's something, there's, there's a succeeding or there's a failing. There's an answer we want or an answer we don't want. As much as possible, with a probe, we're just trying to measure something. It's like a thermometer, a meat thermometer that you put into your steak. You're just measuring what temperature there is. There's, the, there's not a yes or no, go or stop. When you take that steak out of the oven depends on when what, what temperature you would like it cooked at, how thick it is, what temperature the oven is. There's all sorts of different factors that go into this. And the probe is merely giving you a clue about the overall state. So you're going to actually use in innovation tactics many, many probes. You're going to keep cycling through and iterating and everything you do is going to be valuable work that gets you closer to either learning that you were wrong about something so you can adapt or making progress with the work that you're going to have to do anyway. So that said, I'll say that there's this fundamental belief, which I've got at the bottom there. Your success, this success of your business, however much, however brilliant your idea is, your success still depends on the behaviours of people and systems that are outside your control. So the deck, the focus section, everything in the deck, really, once you've got that idea, it says start by focusing on the few behaviours that are absolutely necessary for you to be successful and ruthlessly ignore the rest. And this can be hard to do, but the deck will give you support. So let's go into our three different ways that we can validate our friend's business idea. The first one, this is the, the single card, hard hitting, 
uh, wake you up type card. This is disconfirmation bias. So one of my beefs with the idea of validation is that it tends to lead us into confirmation bias. We're going to look for evidence that we are correct, that our idea is a good idea, that people like our idea, all that sort of stuff. That's fine. We can do that, but it's going to lead us astray. It's not going to help us face up to reality. The reality is that if we build it, they will not come. If we build the best product out there, it will still fail. That happens over and over again. The reality is the customer doesn't need it, won't pay for it and won't use it. And so we are going to have to accept that as the ground truth that we're going from and try to disprove it. And with this confirmation bias, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You can pick up the card if you really want to. But what we're going to do is read out the most common startup failure modes, which I've seen over 20 years in, in, in working with startups. And you're going to read them out to yourself or to your team and just get a feeling for which one of these makes you feel the most uncomfortable. And whichever one that is, is probably the place you need to look. And that's going to be hard. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're not going to want to look there, but it's the place you're going to need to go. And then this card guides you to very specific places to go next. What do you need to do next? You're going to design a behavioral probe, a probe to measure how we're we doing here. Is this going where we think it's going? Is this going where we're hoping? Or is there something that's going to get in the way? So this is the very basic level. You're really just looking at the very common failure modes and then you've got three different options after that. Can't really get easier than that. This is validation 101. What about option two? Slightly more, uh, slightly more complicated, slightly more in depth, slightly more of a, a hurdle, a bigger hurdle for you to jump over. With this one, solve the distribution. We realize that the, the quote at the bottom Otherwise, smart people continually, repeatedly underestimate distribution at their own peril. What do I mean by distribution? Distribution is how your idea, how your startup, how your feature, how your product, whatever it is, how it gets out to people in the real world. Again, you can build the most incredible product. If nobody knows about it, nobody's going to use it and it's, it can't sell itself. So someone has got to get that out in front of the people who are going to need it. And it needs to become visible to the people who are going to need it. They need to, in their daily life, with their incredibly overstretched attention and their not having enough time to think, not enough time to do what they're already doing, this has got to jump out and speak to them and say, for what you need to figure out, this is what you need. This is the product that's going to help you make progress with your biggest struggle. And it's got to be absolutely clear to them. They then have to go through the steps of putting in enough effort to understand what it is, to be willing to pay the cost, to just, yeah, be, be willing to take a chance on this thing that's come out of nowhere. Now, if you're a massive company and you've already got a huge list of people who are interested in what you're doing, then you can get a jump start on this. You can send something out. You're still going to have to get those people interested enough. I've worked with loads of B2B companies or big big business companies who have these big lists of people and they're sure they're going to be interested in something and we send out an offer and nobody takes it up. Like distribution is its own thing and it's you're going to have to figure this out at some point and I would suggest figure it out before you start building your wonderful magic product, not afterwards. Because what I've frequently seen, harking back to what I said at the beginning, is that when you work out distribution that shapes what your product is going to be. It is interlinked with what you build. It's not something you do as an afterthought. So you need to solve for distribution at the same time as you figure out your product. Sound hard? Well, it's simple on the back. We're just going to tell two detailed stories about a specific person. And all they need to do is choose your innovation, your idea, your business, and then use it. And what we're hitting in these two stories are the specific moments that will flesh out that story. How do they come across your idea? Why are they even looking for your idea? Then how do they come across it? Why do they choose it? And how do they justify their choice? And then in the product story, what is the struggle? How have they, what have they already been doing to try to make progress? Why is that not enough? How does your idea then fit in? And how does your idea make their life better? 
You can tell these stories very simply. You can use a human story map or just list them out as another card for human story map. Then based on which one feels flimsier, you're going to blast through and follow out with some, some, some other tactics that are going to help you. So again, the card will guide you. Now, there's another one that you pair this with, which is really nice. Uh, it says, next, use Hard Test Easy Life. Here's Hard Test Easy Life. Now, this is the, the, the fundamental understanding that your product or your new startup idea doesn't need to be fully complete and fully beautiful and looking exactly like a startup should look in order to start making progress. For your earliest customers, you just need to help them make progress with a struggle. That is the hard bit. You need to be noticed and you need to help them make progress with a struggle. If you can do that, they're going to put up with a lot of jankiness, a lot of roughness, a lot of places where there isn't even a startup working yet. It's just you behind the scenes, um, pulling levers, typing things, figuring it all out. So with Hard Test Easy Life, what you're doing is zeroing in from the, the stories we told in the first card, we're zeroing in on these two moments. When do they choose it? And when does the most novel element make their life better? And we're going to, uh, we can flesh out the thinking with the, the work from Soul for Distribution, but we're going to focus on those two key moments. And then we're going to look to simulate them today before we build anything. And with Behavioral Probe, another card from the deck, there's going to be loads of options for how to do this to help you brainstorm loads of different ways to do it. There's not just one way. It's not survey or experiment. There's tons of ways to do this and they're all there in Behavioral Probe. And then there's a whole section of a whole category of probes which give you more details on the on the most important ones that I've found are useful. We can then use another concept from the deck, pivot triggers, to help you to set your expectations before you run the probe. At what temperature are you planning on taking your steak out of the oven? What, what internal temperature is enough for you? Do you like your steak rare, medium rare, or do you like it well done? And so you're going you're gonna to understand that before you start, which is going to keep you honest. And then finally, you're going to use an Ask Me of an Insight to make sense of what you've seen. Because when you go and do these behavioural probes, you don't just get back the number you were looking for, the, the answer to your question. You get back a whole load of information that and a lot of it will surprise you and a lot of it you're going to need to process so that you can then figure out more ideas and have more options to play with. So there's the two card version. This is a relatively quick way to get you in and running. The final third level one this is kind of where the whole deck really was born, I think, originally, which was, this is a recipe. So there's another factor of all of the PIP decks, but Innovation Tactics has a few of these recipe cards. And these are common situations where we've already planned out a few suggestions for cards that you can follow in order to do a bigger, a bigger project, meet something bigger than a single card, a single tactic can manage. For probe-based innovation, this is where th this is brilliant. If you're starting from the position of we have an idea, be it a, a new startup, a new product, a new feature, you can start with probe-based innovation. And this is really handy if you're working with a slightly bigger team, especially if you're working with multiple perspectives. So you've got a team with people who think it should be done in slightly different ways, stakeholders who have different perspectives, different goals going on, um, potentially other other partners that you're working with. This this process is really handy when you've got all of that going on because it's largely about communicating and coming together to have a coherent plan for how we're going to figure stuff out. And especially this is about dodging sunk cost bias, which is going to get you otherwise. Sunk cost bias, if you don't know it, this is where once you've put some effort into reaching a goal, you are likely to keep going, even if you can see very clearly that you're not going to meet that goal. And because you've already put the cost in, it's really hard to let go of that because you've already put it in. You want to keep going and you're hoping you can turn things around. The reality I've seen in most cases is you're not going to turn those things around. And yet even when 
multiple teams have known we're not going to turn this around. This is a doomed project. And they can see all the writing on the wall. They d can't grok it. They can't pay attention to it. They can't accept it in their bones until they really have driven that thing into the ground. And it can take months and it can waste your life. And it can burn up all your funds. So you run out and then you don't you don't have any other chances. With probe-based innovation, we're going to skip sunk cost bias, which is going to give us more chances, more ability to adapt to the unfolding reality that we find when we take our ideas out into the world so that we can adapt our ideas and figure out something that's going to work. That's where probe-based innovation comes in. At a high level, we've got the time machine. This is a way of working with all of those stakeholders, partners, team members, everyone who's involved and has a has a stake, has a, a say in what happens, they're going to be involved in this time machine. This is where you're going to, hopefully, through doing the exercise, this is the place where I see people's eyes light up or where the eyes have this sort of sheen of fear as they realise that their assumption that things are just going to work out is maybe not fair. And maybe they do need to crack open the door to a little bit of uncertainty and going and tackling the fears so that we, we're not going to drive ourselves off a cliff. So time machine, really good exercise to do with a team. You can run that in about half an hour to 45 minutes uh, and it will it will unlock the whole rest of the card. It only works if you have a clear idea and a plan and you haven't got too far into it yet. Though however far you've got into it, you can still run it quite usefully. The next after that is multiverse map. At this point, you are going to break down and it's, it, this is a more detailed, more personalised way of breaking down the stories that we were talking about in the in the other cards you saw. So the solve for distribution and the disconfirmation bias, those are simplified versions of the multiverse map you can make for yourself. And this multiverse map, that's where you're going to tell the story of how your idea is going to be encountered by someone in the real world. And what are they going to do and see at every step along the way of, of you of finding, choosing and using your innovation, your idea, your startup? We're going to break that down. I'm going to make another video all about multiverse mapping. It is one of the most powerful methods in the deck, uh, but it does take a little bit of practice. From there, we're going to decide from that multiverse map, which are the key moments. And again, this is a little bit hard test easy life. We're going to decide on the key moments that are most important for us to, to, to probe about, to figure out, are we right about those fears or are our fears unfounded and we can crack on. And that's where we're going to set those pivot triggers. Another card about that and another video about that, I'm quite sure. Then we're going to do a behavioral probe and then we're going to do an ask me of an insight. Give you a quick overview of what these look like. So I don't want to make this too long, but I think there's uh, there's a lot of uh, valuable stuff in here and if you're a startup founder and I know a few who've taken this stuff on board and are using this method successfully if you're a startup founder this is a great place for you to start building your team it's it's kind of a there's a process here which you can work with your team to learn very quickly while shipping the original heart of pivot triggers and, and this whole process was you need to do discovery and delivery at the same time. These are not separate phases where you figure a load of stuff out in discovery and then you go and build and deliver it. No, discovery and delivery are happening at the same time all the time. You can sequence your work in such a way that you can get real progress happening while also leaving yourselves room to adapt if you learn more later. That's the fundamental point behind all of this and is a core in innovation tactics. So if that sounds interesting, then I highly recommend pick up the, the deck. Um, and if you have other questions, if you want me to tackle other questions, then I'm happy to take a look. Let's just take a quick look through these cards before we wrap. So Time Machine, this is an, a group exercise you're going to do with your whole team. And this is going to help you to zero in on where people are most afraid. I'm going to do a whole video about that. Multiverse map. It looks incredibly simple and it is incredibly simple, but it's also incredibly powerful. We're just going to tell this simple little story and it's the process of going through telling that story with your team. 
This can be a smaller team. You don't have to get the stakeholders involved now. But this is where you're figuring out what your what your thing is going to be at a, a different level of granularity than the stuff you're going to build or the processes you're putting in place or the vision that you have for how you're going to take over the world. This is getting down to one person in the world and how they're going to interact with with what you what you put out there. So loads to talk about there another time. Pivot triggers. This is basically what's our trigger that would tell us to pivot. If we see, uh, and there's some examples here, which is we'll pivot if fewer than three out of 10 people agree to talk with us this week when we invite them to a call about the struggle our idea helps with. So this is a really small, simple probe. It's, it's not big scale experimentation and it's not going to give you the sort of uh, what you call it, statistical significance, that level of confidence that you get from a big scale experiment. But you're a new startup. You can't do a big scale A-B test. So don't worry about it. You're going to have to figure this out a little bit at a time. And the idea with pivot triggers is you're not trying to define the perfect experiment. I think this goes back to the the overwhelm our friend at the start was describing. If you're looking to find the perfect experiment to figure out whether your startup idea is going to work, well, I've got news for you. The only experiment is to build the whole startup idea and see if it works. And that is very expensive if you've got anything wrong. So with pivot triggers, we say instead, no, don't try and build one experiment that's great. All experiments are flawed. All small versions of your big idea are going to be flawed in different ways. So do loads of them. And you're going to triangulate a picture over time by repeatedly doing this. And we're not doing these separately from your startup idea. We're doing this as we build the startup idea. As you as you probe for wanted enough signals you and set pivot triggers, you're going to be finding your first customers. As you probe for get it signals, you're going to be understanding how it is that people want to interact with your thing, what they understand, what they don't understand, how you need to make things clearer, how you need to make things easier, or maybe you don't. And as you probe for worth it signals, you're seeing, can we get this done in a way that is worth it for us to keep doing? Or do we need to think of a different way of achieving this? So you're going to be figuring this out as you go. You don't need a grand plan up front. You just need to take the first step on the journey and set a pivot trigger before you take that step. The next one, behavioural probe. This is loads, as I said before, this is lots of different ways of approaching a behavioural behavioral probe approach to putting stuff out there. This means, fundamentally, we're not asking people for their opinions. We're not using, in any of these, I think, a survey as a sort of a, would you like this? Which features would you buy? How much would you pay for this, etc., etc.? Why aren't we using that? Mainly because it doesn't work. I've seen it over and over again. Occasionally, you'll get some interesting stuff from it, but usually you're going to get people predicting what they might do in the future. And we are terrible at doing that as humans. So it's not something you want to take you take seriously. There are some uses for surveys. We cover a couple in the deck. But in general, if you want to validate your business idea, a survey is not the way to go. Instead, Behavioural behavioral probe, This is going, you're going to put something real out there and you're going to see real behaviour happening. And again, they're all corollaries or small or rough or cheap versions of what your big idea will be. But you're looking then for actual behaviour in return. So loads more in there if you want it. And there's loads more specifics in some of the, the other cards in the probe section if you need them. And finally, Anatomy of an Insight. This is one of the, I think, biggest unlocks for a team in the whole deck. This is uh, th- this is a way that we're going to make sense of. We've got a whole section of sense cards which help us make sense of the signals we're seeing from the world when we probe and from before we probed as well. But for this one, w- what we're going to do is take a look at the signals that we've observed and we're going to come up with more different stories about what those signals might mean, which create more options for us to try. Now, that can sound overwhelming, but actually in the context of of getting this done, it simplifies things for teams. And what you're going to find when you try this is that instead of coming up with one big idea that that is going to be a big job to do by 
breaking down the stories and the signals, you create more options and you create more small options, more ways to probe, more ways to deliver while also learning. So this is going to help you to make progress in different ways and give you ideas that you couldn't have otherwise had before you, you did that probe, before you looked at the signals, before you came up with more stories. So the final note on this, the stories that we are telling about what's going on in our world, they limit pretty obviously the options that we think we're going to try. If we tell a story that means that certain options clearly can't work, well, we're not going to consider those options. So as we tell more stories, we're going to see more options that are available to us. That's helpful. But it goes further than that. The stories that we tell about what's going on in the world also limit the signals we can even see. They limit what we're even expecting to notice in the world. And so we don't see what we're not expecting to see. And so when you tell more stories, it opens up your ability to see more of the signals in the world and you can see more of what you need to see, more different perspectives in order to learn faster and to open up even more stories about what might be going on, which open up even more options for you to try. And that's it's the ability to try more options that's going to get you to success a lot faster. So there is your there is your set, this recipe. It should really clearly say at the end, repeat until you're confident. So really, after you've done your anatomy of an insight, you're going to keep looping around. And this is your scaffolding. It's your process that creates loopishness in a team and enables you to adapt at the, the fastest speed you can in order to figure out how you're going to make your startup successful. So there we are. There we have it. Three early stage validation of business ideas, which you can grab right now from the Innovation Tactics deck. This is available right now. You can, you, when you buy it, you get the physical deck. You also get a digital version of the deck with templates for doing all of these different exercises. And you get access to the vault, which has more videos like this going in detail into all the different cards and giving you more of the background, more ideas and more help. So if that sounds interesting, head on over to pipdex.com slash products slash innovation tactics and grab your deck. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was really helpful for you. If you have questions or comments, uh, throw them in the comments below. I'll say now this is my first YouTube video that I'm putting out there. And so I'm going to get better at this, but I was excited to share. So here it is. Enjoy.